Thank you for watching MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. That's Uncle Creepy. creepy. Not my Uncle Creepy. I already have three of those, but uh, Uncle oh, Creepy, Ian McCall. Yeah. Ian, where are you right now? You're in your car? Yeah, I'm literally... My my house has turned into, like I said, a black hole for internet and cable, and AT&T is really trying to piss me off. So I think I'm going to go um, over there and yell at someone. I don't know. I'm really confused at why my house... Literally, I'm, I'm out in front of Sprouts, and it, like... Works now. It doesn't work two blocks that way in my house. Really? That's that is kind of weird. There, I don't understand why. For all the technology we have in the world, we can have these little guys sitting in New Mexico, running a running a plane, doing stuff in the Middle East, and they have full control over it. But we can't be on our phone, our cell phone, inside of our house, and because it falls apart, I don't get it. Um. Yeah, I, I, it boggles the mind. People just it really bug me. Like, come on, just share. Just give me some technology, please. <laughs> All right. Just let me have a little bit, please. Yeah. All right. Let's let's break down uh, Iliard Santos. The opponent you're fighting at uh, UFC 163 down there in uh, in Rio de Janeiro. First, before you break him down, how do you feel about going to Rio? Do you like it down there? Are you comfortable down there? Do you feel safe down there? What's what's your story on it? Um, you know. Beside all the cock exploding spider bites and the transvestite rapists, good night Cinderella, whatever, and the beheading of soccer coach or referees and all that stuff, I'm excited. I don't think they want to kill me. I think that they like me. Um, you know, I made Australia fall in love with me. Some people around here like me. So, um, I mean, whatever. If, even if they end up hating me, then it, it is what it is. You gotta. Everyone has to be hated sometimes. So, um, it, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. And I, I'm excited to go. I've never been to Rio. The fans. I mean, I hate to, to talk crap on American fans, but they're not up to par. You know, like they don't, they don't. They they're, they're just now starting to like try and chant, and it's like I, I don't think they're chanting some like a Kanye West song or something ridiculous, like. You know, it's some theme to something stupid where, like, come on, guys, like, pick it up. And, you know, it's when people will murder someone and behead them and stick their head on a spike over soccer, like, they're serious. Like, they, well, they love, you know, that thing, and, and MMA's becoming that. Um, so I think it's awesome, and, and I'm, I'm not scared. I just know that I need to be a good boy and, and not say anything stupid or, or go to the – places I shouldn't go, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty black and white down there. Now with the way that we all seeing how Brazil is with soccer and how they are past, you know, very, very, very passionate about their, about their athletes. Do you think Chael Sonnen could get away with the same speeches that he was throwing when he was getting ready to fight Anderson Silva the last time? Do you think he'd still be able to get down there and go down to Brazil and, and be okay? Or do you think there'd be a, yeah. an immediate, you know, a hit put on him right away? Um, I think that, they can say they're going to put a hit on him, but I don't think they're going to really do it. I mean, he, in person, is a great, he seems like a great guy, you know, from he's what I... a great I, guy. He is a, an amazingly nice, sweet guy. Like, the stuff he does on interviews, just, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's a shtick. <laughs> it's funny. It's really funny. You have to take, people need to lighten up. Like, you know, yeah. people need to like, that's funny. Like, staying the whole blow dart thing and double dwellers and whatever. Like, it's a, It's funny. You know, I, I get why they're pissed off, but, like, they're not going to kill him over it. I mean, maybe someone had thought about it, but UFC's a machine, and, and um, they would never let that happen. You know, they, they take care of us, whatever, whatever we need, especially someone like that, you know, is so valuable to them. They would never let anything bad happen. You know, and that's the good thing about Dean and Lorenzo, that they understand the culture. They get very, very embedded in the culture, and they know if there's, if there's going to be a problem, they just hire more security and are okay with that. Exactly. Um, there's been a couple of different reports coming out about fighters union. A lot of fighters now are complaining about the pay that they're getting, and, and even with the locker room bonuses and all that. Now they're saying like we need to do something about the fighters union, but then they spend extra money on security. And, and my understanding is the locker room bonuses have gotten way better than they used to be. Do you have a? Do you? I don't want to ask you if you have a problem with your pay. I don't want to, I'm not asking you if you personally think there should be a union or not. But do you see from other fighters that you talk to and other other fighters that you that you hang out with? Or having the exact same issues, or like, you know, we all wish we get paid more. But do you think that they're getting paid the amount that they should be getting paid? Or do you think that everyone should be getting paid up a little bit higher? I mean, sure, it would be nice if we all got paid more money. That would be amazing. But 
you know, I mean, I, I if I need advice, I call Chuck, you know, and he'll slap me, you know, and slap me mm-hmm. into perspective. It's you got to earn, you know, you got to earn what you make. That's simple. Mm-hmm. It's this is no matter how much you complain, it's not going to change. You know, like they're not all all of a sudden going to add another zero to everyone's paychecks because they feel bad. You know, yeah. for one, they don't feel bad. Two, they pay me great. I can't complain. Uh, learn how to budget your money. You know, um, I had someone very close to me squander all my money, <laughs> female, wife. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it still is what it is, you know. Like, she's gone now, so I'm figuring out how to save my money. You know, it's what happens in life. Don't buy expensive stuff. Or if you do, budget everything else in life, you know. It's, um, you know, we're, we're professional fighters. Use that to your advantage. Teach seminars. Uh, host parties or do whatever it is that you're good at. Uh, if you're not marketable, then that's your fault. You know, exactly. you're boring. You know, like it, it's a, it's it's all personal problems, and people are just pissed off because they see. Uh, you know, I, I don't make much on paper. You know, like when it first comes up, people are like you got paid nine grand to headline the show. Sure, that sucks, but I knew. You know, I did get a big ass bonus check in the mail <laughs> because I put on a good fight. So it's um, it could, just comes down to you have to earn it, and the longer you're in the sport, the longer you can keep your head above water and not and not lose and not get kicked out, then the more money you make. It's, it's it's like that in any in any job. You know, you start off making minimum wage um, as a grunt in a company, and then you end up at, you know if you work hard enough, you can become CEO. You know, I, I know guys. Perfect example: Paul Gomez. Okay, started in the mailroom. Working for a surf company, he left with Bob Hurley because Bob Hurley said this guy works hard. Ends up becoming one of the head people at Hurley, running the music division, doing all this stuff. I mean, now he's at Progenix, but perfect example of a guy who started some punk rock Mexican guy who had long hair and whatever, and you know now the guy is you know one of the most important was you know he never kind of stepped out of the surf industry stuff, but became one of the most important people at a big company like Hurley. You know, it's how hard you work. You know, stop complaining and start working. <laughs> and, that, that's and that's always been my, my complaint. You don't you don't get what you're worth. We're all worth a million dollars every time we fight. But you get when you negotiate. And negotiation is how many people want to see you fight, how many people how many people are gonna buy pay reviews to watch you fight, turn on the TV, buy your merchandise, you know, and then you know, obviously they take care of a lot of the guys too in retirement and put them and put them in and give them jobs within the organization when they retire, like like Chuck Liddell's and like the Matt Hughes's, they take care of their own. And it's it's kind of always the way it's been. And it will always be that way because MMA is an individual sport. It's not team. We we get to keep what we kill. And sometimes you got to kill a bunch of guys to get enough to be able to keep, to be able to survive and take care of your daughter. But that's just how it works. And that, that's the, the piece of life. You know, exactly. One last thing before we let you out of here. Break down your opponent, uh, Santos, for me real quick. What do you see in him as you get ready to fight him? Um, I see a old school Brazilian guy who he's gonna no matter what he's he's got almost forty fights, mm-hmm. and that's on that's on record. Who knows how many fights he had, you know, that aren't on, on there. You know, he might have a lot more. You never know because you know, granted, he could have been fighting taxi cab drivers. You know, I know guys who have gone to Thailand. And you got Thai guys who fight three or four hundred times, but <laughs> he's a black belt he gets to. I know that. I, I've uh, my coach has done the research. He's not some award-winning, you know, uh, multi-time world champion. But regardless, he's a black belt. He's probably got better jiu-jitsu than me. Yeah. Um, his wrestling is is uh, it's pretty good for Brazilians timing-wise. You know, he seems strong. He's pretty big. You know, and, and um, obviously dangerous. You know, it's kind of that old-school Valley Tudo shoot a box, step forward, hook, 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 you know, kind of thing. But, you know, the, the, the people that are being pushed out of the product, I guess, of fighter, the, the, the value of fighter being pushed out of Brazil these days is incredible. You know, you look at the Aldos and the, and the, um, you know, the Burrows and those guys, uh, they're no joke, you know. So, obviously, this guy's taking steps forward to train hard and to do his thing. And, and I mean, it doesn't matter if, you, if I've heard of his gym or not. He's working hard, and, and he'll be dangerous. But um, I think that... Stand up, I'm better. Wrestling, I'm better. Jiu-jitsu, he might have the upper hand, but uh, this is MMA. I get the punch him in the face, you know. And I haven't shown what I'm good at. Uh, I I get you know talk shit to all the time. My coach is like, 
every time he goes to ground in my UFC fights, I completely molest everybody. And I just haven't been doing it because, like the person I am, I want to knock people out. I want to show that I can make strides in stand-up. Well, um, you know, I've been trying to listen uh, and then trying to, you know, go back to how I used to fight and just get it done. Uh, my, my job's on the line. My livelihood is on the line. Um, if I lose this fight, me going back to a regional show, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can ever do that again. You know, so uh, I got a lot to lose. I have, I really have my whole life to lose. You know, and, and uh, you know, being a single dad and raising my daughter on my own. Granted, I have my, you know, my luckily my family to help me. Um, she's at my mom's right now. God bless my mom. But you know, it, this is all I got. You know, I don't have an education. I don't have this other stuff, which I'm, sh- you know. I'm guessing he has less. <laughs> you yeah. know, my opponent, he's from Brazil, you know, that's a third world country. Um, not to say, you know, problems are any more problematic than others, but, you know, this is what I've got, and this is what I have to lose, and, and uh, I'm not going to let him take it from me. Ian, thanks for coming on here with MMA Odds Break. I appreciate it. Uh, have fun the rest right. of the day. Kiss your daughter for me when you see her. And uh, have good, have fun down there in Rio. You'll like Rio. It's it's yeah. even with even with the the cock exploding spiders and and the, the raping transvestite hookers, it's right up your alley. You'll have a good time down there. You really will enjoy enjoy Rio, especially the way you fight. The fans are gonna like you, win or lose. Those fans are really gonna like the way that you fight and how respectful you are because you're a real athlete in this sport. There's very few of us left that know how to play this game the real way, and you really do. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, but we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Cheers.